Hello everyone and welcome back to another Surreal Lore video where today we're here to answer one question. Who is Volkmar the Grim? Volkmar the Grim is the head of the Cult of Sigmar, the Church of Sigmar, and is by far the most influential religious leader in the Empire. His official title would be Grand Theogenes, and beneath a Grand Theogenes, real quick so you know, are two Arch Lectors, and we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later, but for now, we need to talk about Volkmar. He's a very talented warrior, but not only that, he's a learned man as well. He will dedicate himself to the vaults of the Empire, reading Holy Scripture all night, trying to find a way to finally defeat Chaos once and for all. Now, Sylvania had grown dim for hundreds of years after Manfred von Karstein was defeated centuries earlier, but you would have in the year 2522 a growing evil in Sylvania. It was really so bad that you had a veil of darkness to where not even light could penetrate the borders of Sylvania. People would begin to speak about rumors that Manfred von Karstein had returned. Now the common knowledge during his time period that he was defeated by the Elector Count of Stirling at the Battle of Hell Finn. Two years prior in 2520, Volkmar would send a witch hunter called Gunther Stahlberg to investigate these claims here, trying to find out if Manfred had in fact returned or not. Gunther Stahlberg would not be heard from for those two years. Now, he wanted to investigate even further, however, the war up north took his entire allotment of attention. He had to help out Karl Franz. Later, you would have one night when all of the Elector Counts would meet up with the Emperor, and that would be for the Conclave of the State, and they would begin to argue over border disputes, and Volkmar was really tired of it all. He wasn't a man of political intrigue, he was a man of action, he was loved by his men and his followers. However, the leaders of the Empire didn't really care for him very much. Now, on top of a huge table, you had a giant map displaying the entire Empire. Above him was a glass ceiling, and that glass ceiling would shatter completely, and a body would come plummeting down, landing on top of the County of Sylvania on the map. That body was recognized by Volkmar. It was the body of Gunther Stahlberg, and his mouth was a scroll, and on that scroll was a wax seal, symbol of a bat, the symbol of the Von Karsteins, and... Then Volkmar would take that scroll and he would read it aloud, and it would be a challenge from Manfred saying that, hey, we are succeeding from the Empire. And then he laid out his claim to the Imperial Throne, saying that he was a heir of Vlad von Karstein and that he actually had a right to become the Emperor. Now, he would even put in a little mocking signature, too. It would ask, how could the great leaders of the Empire protect its borders when they were barely aware of what was taking place under their noses? Now, Volkmar would have a haunting feeling in his gut, and he would send his arch lectors there with Reichsgar to the temple vaults where they were found rummaged through, and the guards were cut down. There was only one item that was missing from the vaults, and that would be the crown of sorcery that belonged to Nagash. That's really bad. Nagash would be the first great necromancer, a powerful wizard, and that is an item of immense power, too. Volkmar would swear in front of everyone there that he would kill Manfred or die trying. Volkmar would meet up with his senior Archlector Kaislin and gather a group of the most powerful warriors of the Cult of Sigmar to prepare a crusade to go into Sylvania. Karl Franz gave Volkmar his permission but could not contribute the army of Altdorf to this endeavor, as it would warn Manfred of their intentions and send Manfred into hiding. The Empire was also under threat from the Chaos Worshippers of the North. Rather, Carl would send a request over to the Krieg Marshal of Talibiklin to pick men to join Volkmar, and he complied as he remembered what happened at the Conclave. They would travel into Sylvania, and I won't cover every little bit of information, but we can cover a little bit more about it. It's a lot of plot stuff here about what is going on, a lot of individual events. I'm trying to cover general events, but yeah, we can go into a little bit about it. And I'll even go into what a war altar is, which is what you'll see the Grand Theogenes upon. Volkmar and his men would board a great armored barge called Leopold III, and they would travel down the Stir River. One of the men with him was Albrecht von Corden, a trusted witch hunter who worked for Volkmar. He was a survivor of the purge of witch hunters from Sylvania's land and had really suspected Manfred's return for a long time. On a side note, he has three vampire kills notched on his belt. There's a lot of signed characters here because, I mean, what we're getting into is a main storyline for this scenario called Sigmar's Blood, which is where all these units even come from, like all the regiments of renown. That is why I don't want to really get into it. I'm trying to cover a few bullet points here. That way you know a little bit about the plot, but I won't cover the entire plot to let you know. They would press on with the barge in tow until they would reach Leitzigerford, where they would meet up with the men sent from Tannabiklin, who numbered fewer than 50 men. They would keep on going until the captain would take no further than the shores of Helsing. 
and they would encounter evil creatures from the water who were easily dispatched and they would reach a little village called Ulpheim by nightfall where they resupplied. The next day, Volkmar would split up the crusade into two little groups, hoping to elude detection and to hunt down more agents of Manfred. Volkmar would lead his men over to Fort Obersteyer, while von Corden would lead his men to Konigstein Tower, and he was very pleased about that. He did hear that his foe, a person that he's been wanting to kill for a long time, Necromancer Gorst, lived there, which is another legendary lord for the vampire counts in the Grim and the Grave. Von Corden would fight Gorst with his men, forcing him to flee. Eventually, Volkmar's crusade would make it to the fort, and the Archlector would break the gate down with his hammer. They would commit to a grand exorcism and cleanse the fort of all evil. It took all night, but they did it. They would later head to Konigstein to find Corden's men fighting a battle with a group of people called the Strigony, and they are meant to be horse nomads who fight for the von Karsteins. They would also find a corpse cart with Gorst fleeing in tow, too. Corden would find out from one of the horsemen that Manfred had returned and was in Schwarzschafen. They would rush to the town and found an army of undead before it. Manfred was in the middle and challenged Volkmar. While they fought bravely, they were close to being overwhelmed. His war altar was stuck in place by being jammed with so many dead bodies. And there's more plot stuff involving Corden and Light Wizards that I won't get into. But to sum it up, their efforts to break Manfred's control of the undead did work, and many of his minions collapsed, and he was really in a bad position here. Manfred's true intention was to use himself as bait to keep Volkmar away from his prized artifacts, but again, we're not going to get into all of that. But what we will get into right now is what is called the War Altar. War Altars are a creation originating from the rule of Magnus the Pious. It's a huge ornate chariot that has a large effigy of a golden griffin upon it, the griffin being the symbol of Magnus the Pious during that time period. They're consecrated in the Great Temple of Sigmar in Altdorf with the blood of the Grand Theogenist and the Emperor from that time period too, Emperor Magnus. Now, you'll have arch lectors that will ride on top of these and they will draw forth raw power from these war altars because, I mean, they're holy. They're holy artifacts with holy men's blood and that will permit them to unleash a blinding white light which will greatly harm any creature of dark or evil magic. At the time of great duress during any time period, you'll even have a grand theogenist who will ride upon one and at times when it's really not such a grave threat, he'll deign it proper for a arch lector to be upon it instead. One of the roles of Volkmar is to tend to the care of these holy devices. Grand Theogenists are permitted to add their own alterations to each one in addition to usual maintenance. And that is really meant to flesh out their own personality in their own war altar because of how often they will use it. And Volkmar did use his quite a bit. Again, he was fighting all the time up north. Volkmar the Grim would put the Horn of Sigismund upon his war altar. Emperor Sigismund was given his horn by the dwarves after the Battle of Grim Grill Dell. After he died, the horn came into the possession of the Temple of Sigmar. It said that when the horn is blown, you can hear the angry roar of Sigismund. Here's a fun fact about the name of Volkmar. His full name is Volkmar von Hindenstern. The dwarves play a vital role in the overall idea and story of Sigmar because of their ties to Sigmar during his early years and the founding of the Empire. Whenever you have a Grand Theogenist and Arch Lectors, it's customary for them to choose a dwarfin name. The Grand Theogenist Volkmar would choose the epithet Grim. Whenever you choose your own dwarfin name, it's meant to say a lot about your own character. And of course, that means harsh and unyielding and Kalazid, the language of the dwarves. And that really just goes to show you how strong the ties are between the Empire and the dwarves too. It's such a big deal. There's a lot more information about the church that I can convey. I could go on and on and on about it. But for now, I'm going to spare you that. Again, if there's any type of information that you want me to go into, let me know and it'll take me a little bit of time to prep up, but I can definitely make a video for all of you. I really do hope that you've been enjoying these videos. I've enjoyed making them quite a bit. It's been a new change for me, even a challenge, but a very proper one and I love it a lot. On a different topic, I was actually very shocked to see Sigmar's blood being used, but that is a very wise choice to make. I mean, that came before the end times and would set up all of that. It's actually a very good campaign, and there's a lot of information there about individual characters. I mean, if it was not for that, we wouldn't even have the Grim in a Grave entirely. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to leave a like down below if you did enjoy it. If there's any lore that you want to know about, do ask me a question down below. And if enough people want to hear about it, I'll definitely make a video about it talking about lore. And do not worry, I make sure to double check my information. If I ever do slip up, let me know and I can edit it in an annotation. Well, as always, until then.